Welcome to the Tradies in Business podcast with your hosts, Warwick Bidwell and Nicole Cox. Divert your phone and grab a brew as Waz and Nick unpack tips, tales, secrets and stuff-ups from guests both inside and outside your trade, helping educate and inspire you to break the cycle of gut-busting and money stress and create a true trade business. Well, good morning, Coxie, and happy Friday to you. <laughs> good morning, Warwick. <laughs> All our listeners are thinking, hey, wait, what? What's happening here? It's going to flip a few lids, isn't it? It is going to flip <laughs> a few lids. Well, it is if they listen to this on Anzac Day, which is tomorrow, the 25th of April. Uh, but you and I are actually recording this on Friday, the day before. Um, basically, I, I thought it would be good to... You know, do that as a way to pay our respects and not work, quote unquote, although I don't think a lot of people think podcasting is work. Sure. <laughs> Underestimate uh, yes. what's involved in this. But <laughs> um, but yeah, we, we're we both going to be um, paying our respects tomorrow morning. We'll be doing the uh, dawn service in our driveway thing due to the restrictions with the Rona. Um well, I've actually got my daughter staying overnight, so that's going to be really cool. It would be lovely to share it, with her. Yeah, she's done She's done a couple of dawn services with uh, Wifey and I now mm-hmm. um, when she's just happened to be staying with us at school holiday time. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's not been many and uh, this will be interesting. Yeah, it would be great to drag her out of bed <laughs> at uh, 10 to 6 and go stand in our driveway, which is kind of weird because – we live in a country area, so there's not a lot of houses around. We'll just be standing in our driveway with the cows. I'll um, be – well, it'll be really interesting to see some of the footage or the social media stuff or whatever the news happens to take to see how well this is taken up because there's a real mm. mix of people that use the dawn service as their way to pay respect or they attend a service or a march later in the day and then some people – choose not to for their various reasons or, or do so within their own homes, within their own ways. So it'll be really, it's almost calling people out this one. I, I had a conversation with my dad um, earlier this week and we were talking about how I wanted to put something in everybody's letterbox because I didn't want us all getting cranky at the other neighbours for not being outside at six o'clock in the morning because there's a few that I'm pretty sure won't be. But again, who am I to judge? It's a bit like all this other corona stuff, isn't it? We all because all these restrictions, all these rules are in place, we have our own feelings about those and we use them as lens to look at everybody else. So, yes, it will be an interesting morning to see how many are out and about. So what uh, what did Anzac Day normally look like for you guys, Coxie? We had a crack in Anzac Day. We kind of inherited a ritual when we moved here to Ipswich into our very old home. Uh, we have some fantastic neighbours around us. We're all very social and would get together quite frequently. But Anzac Day has always been a very big thing for us where we will meet at the front of our house because it's the f- sort of central one as we all walk down the hill to the boys' school. We live on, at the back of our boys' um, Catholic school and we walk from together as a group. We walk down to the ceremony there. They have a beautiful shrine and we enjoy the service that goes for about 40 minutes. Um, It's a dawn service, although it's about six o'clock as well. Um, And it's lovely. So we always did that. And then we would all race back up the hill, like literally race, but I am talking about people who are 70 and 80. And and then there was our young family. Yes. And a couple of other young families race back up the hill to see who would be uh, first up the hill. And then we would attend one of the neighbor's homes for a barbecue, some Anzac biscuits and hot toddies which was always a bit of fun. Turned into a fun day, actually, but we're all back in bed by 10 or 11 because, you know, who drinks rum in the morning and manages to get past 10? I'd give it a go. You'd give it a crack? Yeah. I, I don't think I've ever had a hot toddy. I think it's just rum and milk. I don't drink rum, so I've never tried one, but um, I think that's all it is. I think they used to drink it in the trenches, didn't they, to keep them warm? Wasn't that the idea of it? Yeah, it was like a, you know, a mood lifter or something. It's been touted as all sorts of things, uh, cures for things, and I don't know uh, how much of that is actually true. No. But, uh, well, it seems to make everybody happy and they sing a lot on Anzac Day ordinarily in our neighbourhood. So it certainly lifts the mood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> might have to give it a go. Although I don't do milk. You might have, I have to, to find. Uh, no, neither do I. I have to find a replacement for milk, so... <laughs> 
<laughs> just a shot of rum. That'll do it. Well, I don't mind. I haven't drunk rum. Drunk rum? Drinking? Maybe I've already drunk. been drinking rum. <laughs> I haven't had rum <laughs> for quite some time now, actually. Um, so, I don't know. I might go and give it a go. Although, I don't live near a bottle shop, so it's going <laughs> to be hard for me to it's find and then justify a bottle of rum just so I can have a, a, <laughs> a snifter tomorrow because, as as most of our listeners know, I don't really drink no, much. Not at all. Very often. So, a bottle of rum would probably last me two years. It would almost last that long here, except that um, the build is quite partial to the occasional rum. I don't think that there is a drink that he doesn't drink, except for sweet rubbish. Um, he'd give anything a crack, I think, in the right mood. We were talking yesterday about gin, weren't we? Yes. Or uh, earlier today? Maybe I'll, that- have I- <laughs> I'll have a G&T. I'll have a G&T at 6 a.m. <laughs> for breakfast. <laughs> I think for many years, though, that's been... Um, I, I, it's interesting, actually. We used to live at the gateway to uh, a couple of really big recreational dams. They're also our water source in Brisbane, but um, there's a big part of those that were open for recreational use. And we would go then to the kids again, the kids' service. This one was at about, I think it's about 9 or 10 o'clock in the morning. And um, it was a school service, essentially. It was, again, it was lovely. They were always really nice. The choir would sing, the kids would play their instruments, blah, blah, blah. But the street would be so busy with boats <laughs> during the service. So many people taking the opportunity to enjoy their – generally the weather here in Brisbane is beautiful in April. So to enjoy their April day and it's it's always a lovely reflection to see that we're able to do something so relaxing and enjoyable and, and take that time out with our family and friends because of the sacrifice that so many made for us. It's it's. Yeah. Yeah, and it's uh, – well, I'd love to talk about alcohol for a lot longer because <laughs> um, it's much better than drinking it, in my opinion. <laughs> Has less of an effect on my uh, my head the next day. True. Um, I, I did want to uh, take this opportunity on Friday the 24th of April, <laughs> uh, but uh, this is obviously our Anzac Day episode for Saturday the 25th, 2020. Um, I wanted to talk about giving thanks – Coxie. Mm. And, uh, you know, we're, we're all pretty um, au fait with the fact that Anzac Day is about, you know, showing thanks for um, our veterans uh, in whatever way, shape or form or campaign they served and um, really just being um, grateful for what other people have sacrificed uh, rightly or wrongly, no matter your views, mm-hmm. uh, I think, no matter your political views, um, but what other people have sacrificed so that we, um, you know, have the opportunities that we do today, particularly here in Australia where we're very blessed in this country, um, despite what a lot of uh, a lot of us complain about a lot of the time. I it's would true. not choose to live in many, many other countries of the world um, by comparison. So, um, but to extend that a little bit, Coxie, uh, and this is getting a bit philosophical for a Friday, Saturday. It is. Uh, um, is uh, I, I don't know that uh, people are very good at being thankful and showing gratitude uh, outside of some of these days and celebrations that we have. Uh, I, I find that a bit sad. I think it's a, a long forgotten art to show appreciation for anything, let alone the big things. I think the big things we have these days to remind us to stop and be thankful and grateful and to show appreciation to those who have served or their families even, my goodness, their families too. Uh, The knock-on effect is enormous. But uh, we tend to forget the little things, particularly in business. And we forget to take time out to pull out a team member and say thank you so much for doing such a great job this week I know that uh, you know things are a little bit weird at the moment but I appreciate you coming to work every day and just turning up and getting on with it that's been fantastic or uh, maybe somebody else that you know through your network that's sent you a customer how about you take a moment to just reach out and say thanks I really appreciate that that customer came to me through your recommendation or your children my goodness I'm really guilty of this I forget all the time or I don't forget that's that's 
taking a way out. How about I call it for what it is? I don't make enough time to stop and reflect on the things that my kids are doing that are helpful and respectful and loving and kind. Um, and I need to do more of that. I'll, I'll own that one, talk about that one. Mm. It, you know, it doesn't take much to stop and be grateful for something somebody has done or for the way they've come into your life and shown you some happiness or they've made you feel good because their smile was so lovely this morning. What, how wonderful would it be if we thanked somebody for um, smiling or saying good morning or it's a big part of why I go for a walk in the morning because I see other people and they all say hello. It's a lovely feeling. Mm. And how good mm. would it be if we actually recognise some of those things? Yeah, it's it's an uh, incredibly powerful way to connect with other humans and create relationship. And I think a lot of people are craving uh, or pining for relationship at the moment yes. where we have all this um, what still gets called social distancing. And sadly, I actually think that's what's manifested now is that we are socially distant from others mm. as much as just being physically different, uh, distant. Uh, and you know, I did a simple thing uh, through the week <clears throat> of stopping at a service station. And for those listeners that don't know, I'm not sure how you've missed this, but <laughs> <laughs> my wife and I have uh, recently moved to Tasmania in the middle of the pandemic, which has been a barrel of laughs. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and so we're sort of rediscovering our local servo and our local butcher and just finding some of those services that – um, when you live in an area for a while, you sort of have your your locals, and uh, we have none of that at the moment. So, I'm just trying out a few different spots, and we we're in uh, one of the little towns uh, not far from us yesterday, transacting some business, and um, pulled in to get fuel. And I jumped out of the car and went to grab my gloves, uh, which is standard for me because I drive a diesel, so I always chuck the gloves on like a truckie to fill up the car. Um, and uh, before I could get my gloves out, old mate appeared and started pulling petrol. Uh, holy and, moly and he said i know i nearly well i wondered if he was going to steal my wallet or um you holy know moly. arrest me for breaking iso conditions or something um but he said uh how much would you like mate and i was like wow i haven't been asked that question at a service station for i don't know 20 years you have to be and so they have full driveway service that is the cool <laughs> i'm moving to tasmania that's it i'm calling it And I felt really weird because I'm standing there, like, just kind of looking at the ground and shuffling my feet, and (laughs) and here's someone else filling my car up. Was he wearing gloves? Uh, Yes, he was. (laughs) (laughs) Um, He was wearing those really cool black nitrile chemical-proof ones because he obviously Ah. doesn't like diesel all over his hands either. (laughs) That's disgusting, isn't it? I've got blue plastic ones for my diesel car. Yeah, yeah. uh, Disposable ones. Yes. So, um, anyway, chatting to old mate and uh, basically, you know, he asked me how my day was and we got to talking about the fact that we'd moved here recently and finding our locals and choosing to support some of the smaller local businesses. Now, it's mm-hmm. still a big branded service station, but it's owned and run, obviously, by a local business. Um, and I said, you know, we're just trying to support or we want to support the local businesses. We're mm. coming here for as much of our shopping as we possibly can um, and staying away from the city and the big box retailers. Um, and, you know, that's that's just how we're voting with our dollars. But also for us coming to Tassie here, we feel like we're sort of – that's our way of saying thank you to the, the locals is by giving them our money. Yes. Um, and uh, he actually said thank you. He said, thanks, mate. We really appreciate that. Um Great to have you here. You're going to really love it here. And I just felt this warm glow of appreciation for each other and he was grateful and I was grateful and there was little birds flying past and the music (laughs) played and I skipped across the driveway and then I slipped on a patch of diesel and fell on my ass and sued him for injuring me. (laughs) But, like, it's something so simple of just saying thank you. Mm, It is simple. Thank you. We really appreciate your business. Mm. Like, cost him nothing. And I have actually had arguments with employers about doing that with their team members. And Mm. I'm sorry, listeners, to loop this back to a business thing on a Saturday, Anzac Day. And, you know, that's what Coxie and I are here. That's part of our purpose is 
I've literally had people argue with me, but was. I'm not going to say thanks for doing that when that's their job. It's crazy, isn't it? It's like, but since when did paying somebody some money absolve you of any opportunity or responsibility to be human and just say thanks? Absolutely. It's not hard Hey, was. I know I pay you five grand a week to, uh, you know, sit around and do paperwork in my trade business. Um, wouldn't that be awesome? Wouldn't it? Uh, <laughs> um, but thanks for doing such a good job, mate. Or thanks for pushing so hard during COVID. Or, you know, thanks for going out of your way to help our junior staff member settle in. Or thanks for picking up the slack when Bill was sick. Like, it doesn't have to be this monumental thing where somebody saved your life and that's when you say thank you. No, absolutely not. And I think that we forget that paying, it doesn't matter what you pay somebody, that doesn't mean they have to work hard for you. It might be your expectation, but if they don't feel valued and they don't feel secure, they're not going to push hard for you. And a really simple way for your team members to feel valued is to say thank you. I appreciate what you're doing. I appreciate you you being here. I appreciate you working hard. It's Mm. an underrated tool. Oh, it's, it's phenomenal and it seems to be missing from society, perhaps even more so these days in the social distancing climate mm. where people see, seem to have become even less communicative. They say less. They make less eye contact. You know, we're all like worried that if I look you in the eye and speak to you, the virus is going to get me. <laughs> and there's almost this awful... Uh, Um, mistrust and unease between humans. So I feel that a lot. I see it even in the street where we might have met and spoken with some of the neighbours. Now we cross the road or they cross the road. One of us crosses the road to give each other that social space. But that means you can't have your normal morning conversation. How are you? How are you feeling (laughs) today? Shouting across the street. Exactly. And the worst bit is... Bob, how are you going? (laughs) Most of our neighbours are elderly and many of them are home on their own. And whilst we're regularly checking in via text because we, we do have a beautiful community here, um, regularly checking in and they do have children dropping in to make sure they're okay, they're very isolated, they're very alone, but they feel frightened and scared because they're elderly and they don't want to get sick and they're very concerned for their health and then they're concerned that, you know, the Elderly are very big thinkers and they stop and they think, well, maybe I'll make you sick and then that might make your children sick and, oh, my goodness, I I need to stay away. So I agree it is a very strange time, but more than ever now we need to be showing gratitude and saying thank you. Mm. And you can do it from a distance. You don't need to be in their face. Absolutely. But they need to know. They need to know that you feel that way. And I think some of us feel grateful and and we appreciate those around us. And I have definitely been, uh, I don't like the word guilty, <laughs> but but I've definitely um, done this over the years is mm. I've done a, a less than awesome job of expressing gratitude towards others. And it's not that I don't feel it or think it. I appreciate what they've done for me. I just didn't think enough to actually say, hey, Coxie, Thanks so much for all the hard work you do with our, our groups and our social media account. You say it all really the time. I really appreciate it. You're very good with I, your gratitude. <laughs> but I've had to actually consciously practice that over the years mm. to make it a habit um, because I learned, in essence, the hard way what not doing that does to relationships. You yes. Know? Yep. By not saying thank you and showing appreciation and letting others be heard or feel heard. That is that has catastrophic effects on a lot of relationships. You've just Chuck Norris and you don't even realise what you've done. <laughs> Help me out, Coxie. I'm you, I'm feeling a bit slow on a Friday. You've just Chuck Norris back to your uh, uh, story with the big department store that yeah. made an error. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. With your yeah, yeah, the other day. Don't get me started yes. on the on the big brand <laughs> department store. And that's the thing, right? It's I was actually thinking of that um, sort of earlier in this episode of uh, listeners. If you didn't hear that one, it's gold. It's it's was ranty pants gold. <laughs> it's ranty pants gold. <laughs> uh, earlier this week, but um, yeah, like something so simple. And you know what it is, Coxie. Mm. My my opinion is that. 
the human nature has been taken out of a lot of our interactions in society. Mm. We're, we're transacting online without actually speaking to a human. Uh, you know, we're emailing, we're texting, we're texting people we love in, in a written format that just doesn't carry the same meaning and display of um, appreciation, I'll use that word a few times, mm. of writing a, a letter, a handwritten letter, uh, you know, dropping a text out to say, hey, thinking of you, it's nice, but imagine if you actually put the effort into write a letter or send a card, a simple $1 shop tight ass thank you card um, and stuck a $50 stamp on it because I think that's what postage has gone up to these <laughs> days um, and sent a thank you card to someone, just someone who's who matters to you in any way. What if you did uh, that with all of your client base? Oh, my gosh. At a time like Again. this, can you imagine how good that would make them feel and how – how much goodwill it would throw back in your direction. Not that that should ever be the motivator for doing so, but to stop and say, hey, I'm just checking in, see how you're going, thought I'd I'd send you a handwritten card. It would take you, I don't know, it depends on your client base. It wouldn't take long to do each of them individually and send them out. Can you imagine the goodwill that would come out of that, the feeling that you would create in other people that, oh, my goodness, that person actually cares about me? Yeah. So, uh, you know, I love Anzac Day. I love the expression of gratitude and I suppose appreciation. Um, There it is again. For people we don't even know, many of whom sadly have passed on. Uh, That's the way of of life. Um, And I've been to so many dawn services over the years. And I had, um, you know, great uncles serve in the in the various campaigns, various wars. Um, no immediate family, fortunately. Uh, but, uh, you know, I've been to so many dawn services and I look around at thousands of people standing there giving thanks to people they never knew, will never know, have no comprehension of what those people went through and yet there's this huge outpouring of gratitude. And then I wonder how many of those same people just say a simple thank you to someone who let them go ahead of them in the line at the shops or, oh, yes. uh, you know, like yes, <clears throat> maybe maybe think beyond these big days and, and formal ways to celebrate this stuff and actually do the hard work and the real the real uh, valuable work of making it a part of everyday life. So that's my little uh, reflection, Coxie, on Anzac Day 2020, Um, lest we forget and uh, almost brings a tear to my eye when I say that myself. Mm. Um, Just thinking about tomorrow's... uh, Minute of silence, and um, I'm I'm going to do that myself. I'm going to resolve to to be more thankful outwardly with those around me um, for the rest of the year. Let's start with our listeners. Say thank you for being here. We really appreciate that you allow us into your lives at the moment on a daily basis, but even um, regularly. That's it's awesome that you are consuming what we're creating feels pretty damn special actually to see how many people listen to what we do um thank you Mm. yeah i'll uh echo that coxie you say that very well thank you thank you well thanks listeners for tuning in um i think we should probably just wrap that up coxie and uh (laughs) i'll say again lest we forget uh may you enjoy your anzac day take a moment to Um, give thanks and uh, just recognize the sacrifice of others so that we may have the life that we do and uh, take care and stay safe. Thank you. You've been listening to the Tradies and Business podcast with Warwick Bidwell and Nicole Cox. Find out more about today's guest, tools for your trade business and other cool stuff at tradiesandbusiness.com.au.